And yes, sir, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. So, second year of Harmony, how's it going? So, the Harmony goal is for the, for the global nuclear industry to deliver 25% of the electricity by 2050. The Harmony goal is, in fact, the vision of the global nuclear industry where nuclear energy plays its role among other low carbon options. So, it's a vision for a transition of energy to a clean future. And if we need to have 25% of electricity by 2050, we need to build like a thousand gigawatt of new nuclear capacity. And that is more or less to triple from the level we have today, the construction level. How do you countenance that with the fact there's an aging fleet in, in the United States and all the new mm -hmm. builds? Uh, mm -hmm. Are you looking to have an even spread or are you looking for li reactor life extension? Mm -hmm. how, how does that work? So uh, the 1,000 gigawatt, we say, is new capacity. And of course, we have looked at that there will be some, some reactors taken offline. And of course, if you take more reactors offline, you have to build even more new ones to compensate for that. But at this time, uh, it is, uh, all the reactors ongoing, most of them are looking to have longer uh, licenses, uh, e extension of licenses, and even maybe going to 60 or even 80 years of, a, of uh, operation. So it, that's part of the game, but that is, we are taking that into account, but 1,000 gigawatt is new on top of that. And, and how's that going? What mm -hmm. are the steps that you need to go through to, to make mm -hmm. that happen? Mm -hmm. So new build can be accelerated if some of the barriers are taken down. And what we see are, are, are barriers is that we are, you, usually nuclear is not given the same equal playing field in the electricity markets. So if nuclear attributes are not valued, it will not come online, it will not be invested in. So there will be no new build if you're not getting any, any payback for being low carbon, being a, a, a stabilizer of the grid. It's uh, giving a lot of uh, benefits to the grid, making it uh, stable, making it re resilient, making it work 24-7, enabling low, other low carbons, intermittent low carbon energy options to also be in the grid. If you don't have any stability, you cannot have the others either. So this is important to have a level playing field. The other part which is important is harmonized regulatory processes. That means you cannot have more and more layers of, uh, of regulations and, and changes to the system coming on top because we need to be able to copy a, a, a one reactor type that is built. We need to copy and do it again because then we do it better. Then we need to copy again and again and not do changes to the system. And also we need to have one reactor that is designed in one country to also be able to operate and license in another country because it's a lot of paperwork, a lot of analysis otherwise done. The third element is that we have to see at gaining safety for the people. That means clean air, no, uh, reducing air pollution. That means also protecting the world from climate change. And then nuclear energy will contribute to this and replacing other energy sources that are in fact polluting and uh, a risk for the climate. And, and which of those is the most <coughs> complex of the barriers? Is, is it having it seen as an, uh, an equal, mm -hmm. or, or are there other issues at play here? Mm -hmm. I think they are all quite, uh, quite tough barriers, because you have in, in uh, the deregulated markets, you have already put in place subsidies for certain energy sources, and to sort of stop these systems and realize if we will overbuild the, uh, some of the intermittent energy sources, then we will destabilize the grid. It takes some time to get this through. And this is how we can see now we're getting success because we see that people are listening, uh, governments are listening to what we are saying, Government, intergovernmental bodies are listening. So we see that we see some success that first of all you need to understand what are the barriers, why is it not coming forward in the way it you do, and also why are not emissions going down? In those countries that say really have made a commitment to reduce uh, emissions, and there's no result. They are all like either leveling on, even plateauing, I was like even going up with emissions and then staying on that level instead of reducing, which they said they should do. 
So these are now coming forward that is understood. We need nuclear. It's in, in the absence of nuclear that we be no sustainable energy future. What are the next steps? What, what do you do next? How, how do you promote this initiative? Well, first of all, we had a plan, which we still have, is to first we are developing some, some of our areas internally and then we will go and talk to the governments. We already see that it's already have gone much, much faster than we ever thought. So now the governments in fact are coming to us and asking for us to come to them and to speak to, to different uh, audiences, as well as we have been seeing that United Nations organizations, uh, other intergovernmental bodies also see that oh, maybe we should have also nuclear part of the agenda. So it's, that's growing and we are really happy to uh, be part of the launch of the nice future by the Clean Energy Ministerial. So nuclear innovation for clean, for, for clean energy for the future. So we are part of that as well, together with many governments. And we are really happy to see that nuclear is included in the discussions of the energy transition, clean energy for the future, sustainable energy. That's some great progress just in two mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really taken off. Great. Thank you very much. Well, excellent work. Thank you, Agnes. Yeah, thank you very much.